Hello. In this video I will show you how to calibrate and configure the wireless head tracker. I assume you have already flashed the dongle and the tracker with the latest firmware. If you haven't, there is a link in the video description that will guide you through the flashing process. First you need to download and unpack the wireless head tracker software package. This is the same file you have used to flash the dongle and the tracker. You can find the download link in the description of this video. It is a single zip file which contains both the flashing tools and the configuration and calibration program. Unpack it into a new folder, but not under program files, because the config program will need to save data into the same directory where it's running from. And that is not possible without elevation since Windows Vista, and we don't really need elevation, it just makes things more complicated than they should be. Um, so the wireless head tracker software package is that simple zip file is right here on my desktop, and I'll unpack it. I'll unpack it here just for simplicity. And it contains two folders, uh, Flash, which we already dealt with, and Config, which contains the program, the configuration program that we'll uh, use in this video. So let's start it. Close this. At this point, the dongle, as you can see here, dongle disconnected. It's not uh, plugged into the USB port of my computer, so let's just fix that. Let's plug it in. Now it's plugged in. The program recognized that it's um, that it's in, but the tracker is disconnected. So let's turn on the tracker too. And now you can see as I move the tracker in my hand, uh, it's. There's a radio connection and it's working. First, we need to calibrate the gyroscope and the accelerometer. So, click Gyro Calib Calibration. Next, you have to place the tracker in a horizontal position and keep it motionless. It's okay if the, if the tracker is attached to the headphones or, or a headband, but that makes it more difficult to keep it in the same position. So, when the tracker is motionless, plus press Calibrate. Wait a couple of seconds, and the tracker is calibrated at this point. So we can close this dialog. Next is the magnetometer calibration. For best results, the tracker needs to be attached to the headphones or headset you will use to, to keep it on your head. I have tried calibrating a tracker on its own and on a headset, and I got surprisingly different results. So press magnetometer calibration. Maximize this just for makes things prettier and click start sampling. Now rotate the tracker together with whatever it is attached to in all possible directions. As you do this, you'll notice dots or points start appearing, appearing in the blue window, and the value of a number of points, this field here, starts increasing. After you have collected enough points, you will notice that the dots are grouped into something that looks like a sphere. You can, as you rotate this, you see that this is indeed a sphere. This, usually, this sphere is usually offset from the center of the projection and is also a little stretched out. Sometimes it might, it might resemble a rugby ball. As you rotate the tracker, Try to cover most of the surface of the sphere with points without leaving large free patches. Once you have at least 400 points and most of the empty patches of the sphere have been covered, you can click Stop Sampling. So we're working towards it at the moment. Stale points. Stale points. So now we have 400 points. Click Stop Sampling. After that, click Calculate Calibration and Send Calibration to Dongle. 
at this point the dongle is the the magnetometer is calibrated another thing uh, that you should do before you close this dialog is save the points that you've collected this is important in case the the uh, in case you flash the dongle later on and uh, you need to calibrate it again so to avoid collecting sampling points again what you can do is just load them from a file cal do the uh, calculation and send the calibration to the dongle so let's just save the file at the moment uh, yeah mag data or wherever else just click save and the next time you want to calibrate, you'll get something like this. So clear all points. This is a completely blank um, dialog with no points sampled. So just load. And you have the same points that you have that you have saved just a minute ago. So you, what you would do in that case is click calculate and send calibration to the dongle. And that's it. So the magnetometer and the gyroscope are calibrated. Now we can tweak the settings of the head tracker. The way your head movement translates to the movement in the game can be changed by these four controls, axis response and the three axis factors. With axis response, you can switch between linear and exponential response. In linear response mode, equal amounts of head movement are translated to equal amounts of on-screen movement regardless of your head's position. In exponential, the head movement close to the center will cause little screen movement, and the further away your head is from the central position, the faster the screen movement will be. You can select how fast that movement will be with the axis factors. Larger numbers here mean that the screen movement will be larger will be faster actually. It is best to experiment with these values until you find something that you really like. The yaw correction method combo box selects which method will be used by the dongle to do the yaw drift compensation. If you leave, if you leave it on auto, it will use the magnetometer data if it's available or use the jump to center method if there is no magnetometer data. You can select also jump to center or magnetometer to force either only one or the other method. If you select none, no correction will be done and the yaw drift and the yaw will drift eventually until you recenter it manually. The last, the none option is usually only used for, for uh, debugging. Every time you change something in this group, let's say I want to change this to 16, it will not be immediately saved to the dongle until you press save dongle settings. So if I press it now, at this point the yaw factor has been, has been changed to 16. So let's change it back because I don't really like that. Then there is the recenter binding function. With this you can bind the key on your keyboard or a button on the joystick to do the view recentering so you will not have to reach for the little button on the tracker to do so. To select which button or key you will use for this, just click the bind button and then press the key or button you want to use. So bind and let's press a button on the joystick, this one for instance. The binding setting, setting is saved into a configuration file in the same folder where the config program is located. If the magnetometer calibration was done right, you will only need to recenter right after you put the headphones on your or your head or when you change your seating position. For recentering with a button on the keyboard or joystick to work, you will have to keep the config program running in the background. So if you close the program, you will only be able to recenter with the button with the little button on the tracker itself. And that would be it. If you have any questions, please uh, post them in the comments section and I will answer them as fast as I can. Thanks for watching.